following our assessment station. Um, the next station that is up for you um, to sit through or to um, encounter is your planning station. So following the previous um, discussions done by Audrey in the previous video for planning, I will just be supplementing um, what we need for planning subdural hematoma, which is our station that we have performed for assessment. So few of the technicalities that I want to discuss are some of the things that Audrey has also discussed previously, meaning that your planning is a 14-minute station. It's a silent station, meaning you are not going to have to talk to somebody else. Um, basically, you will develop your own care plan in silence and throughout the 14 minutes. Um, what you will use is a black pen, separate from the green pen that you use from your assessment station. Um, so that no superimpositions will be made from your assessment paper. Um, you will also need your assessment paper with you in case you need to refer to the vital signs or the documentations that you have collected from your patient during your assessment. Okay? Few top tips um, that are guaranteed and foolproof so that you will pass your planning session or that you will be successful is that you have to remember Number one, to make sure that your candidate name is listed on the first page of your planning paper as noted here. Okay, Make sure that you read your scenario all throughout and that you have to remember that your assessment station and your planning station are different time frames. So if you have noted earlier from the previous video shown, your assessment station was um, at 10 o'clock in the morning and your planning now is at 11 o'clock. So please be mindful um, to take note of this when you are um, making your planning paper. Another thing that um, I can give you as tip is that most usually your scenario for planning will not um, directly relate to whatever maybe your patient is experiencing during the assessment. This is the reason why your planning has a different scenario from your assessment. So you have to remember in making your nursing care plan, there should be two care plans that you have developed within the 14-minute time frame relevant to your patient's scenario and um, corresponding to your patient's care. So these two nursing care plans can either be two actual nursing needs or one actual nursing need that you perceive from the assessment and another potential nursing need if in case this was not um, clearly mentioned in your assessment, but is implied in your planning scenario. So again, I just want to make it clear. Usually, it's two actual care plans. Sometimes, it could be one actual and another one could be a potential care plan. Okay, so with that in mind, um, I will flash through your nursing scenario so that you can take note of what you need to consider when you write your nursing care plan. So coming into um, terms when you're writing your care plans, so first page and the second page and the third page will look like this. So three things that you need to bear in mind are these three boxes here that are really important when it comes to developing your nursing care plan. So for the first item, which is your nursing problem or nursing need, you have to bear in mind that your problem should be um, in sentence form, that it should be in present tense because you're still planning um, your um, nursing care plan for your patient or your patient's nursing need. And you have to remember that the problem need not um, to be complicated. It should be clear, concise, and it will have actual evidence supporting um, what the problem is. So, for example, our first problem that we will write in here is one of your actual problems that your patient is experiencing during the assessment, which is pain. So, what I'm going to write should be Marjorie Ecclestone is experiencing severe headache with a pain score of 7 out of 10 bearing in mind that 0 is no pain and 10 is the worst pain. So having said that, when you write your evidence for whatever problem it is, if it's with relation in relation rather to your observations or your vital signs or in this case pain, 
you should write your range. So, 0, no pain, 10, first pain. Okay? So, for your aims of care, which is the second box there, you should also bear in mind that you have to write your patient's complete name. Okay? So, Marjorie Ecclestone um, should appear in your nursing problem, your aim of care, and your re-evaluation date. Her names on all of those boxes should be complete. So for your aim, um, kindly refer to the previous planning video that was um, presented by Audrey. So um, bear in mind to use measurable verbs. So um, to proceed with your aim of care, we should write this as Marjorie Ecclestone will verbalize that her headache has been relieved and that her pain score is 5 um, over 10 or less. So, your measurable ver verb there is verbalize, meaning there should be concrete evidence of the patient actually telling you um, that her headache has been relieved and that her pain has already resolved. Um, in the same way, when we do our planning for impaired mobility, you shouldn't just write Marjorie Ecclestone will have improved mobility because there's no basis to that but rather she would need to demonstrate it in front of you so demonstrate is the measurable verb for that okay um and then finally for your re-evaluation date which is at the bottom part of your um care plan page this will be determined based on the time frame noted in the scenario in the first page of your planning paper so in this case, if you have a read of this, it will ask you for two relevant aspects of nursing care suitable for the next 24 hours. So you have to bear in mind that time frame as well when you write your re-evaluation date. Um, also, please remember that the re-evaluation date is not the re-evaluation of your patient. Rather, it's the re-evaluation of your patient's care plan. So the re-evaluation um, of your patient is already and will be specified in the nursing interventions boxes or box rather that comprises most of your nursing care plan. So now that we've discussed the nursing problem, aim of care and re-evaluation date, we will now discuss the nursing interventions. So this should appear as this when you do your planning. So you need to utilize all of the space provided for you. Um, things that you should know prior to writing your nursing interventions. It will not matter if it's in numerical form, if it's in bullet form or in paragraph form, as long as all of these interventions are in complete sentences, okay? Meaning the sentences should be complete, okay? Your first Second, and usually the eighth and the ninth intervention is already a given, provided by the format that we teach our um, nursing candidates in our trust. So these are the interventions that are explaining the procedure to the patient, as well as um, the second one, which is the monitoring. And the last few ones, which are providing the call bell to summon help and to document all care as planned. So anything and everything in between these four interventions, you have to always be mindful that it should be in chronological order. So meaning, um, you should first explain the procedure and then when you monitor the patient, everything that follows after that should be bedside interventions. If the bedside interventions don't work, then that's the time for you to administer medication if you're able to or if your nursing problem allows you to. And then once you've administered the medication, um, if the medications don't work, only then and thereafter should you write a referral to whatever team is appropriate for that nursing um, problem or intervention. Okay, So to make it as detailed as possible, um, I will read through the nursing interventions for you for this problem of severe headache or pain with a pain score of 7 out of 10. And then shortly after, we will flash the um, care plan um, so that um, everybody can refer to it in their own time. So for our nursing interventions, 
you first have to obviously explain procedure to Marjorie and gain her consent for all planned interventions because you cannot carry out a care plan without the consent of your patient. So that is essential. Number two is monitoring and recording her neurovital signs. Because your case is a subdural hematoma and your documentation related to your assessment is not a news chart, it's a GCS chart. So you should be able to answer or to address um, that monitoring with the same um, frequency that it requires. So the second step is monitoring and records her neurovital signs with a GCS score of 14 over 15 and a frequency of every 30 minutes for 2 hours, hourly for 4 hours, and 2 hourly thereafter, escalating as required per policy. Following that, because your patient's problem is pain, another monitoring intervention you could write is something that is related to pain, which is monitors and records her pain using the pain assessment tool. And obviously, your action after that will entail that you escalate it to the medical team as per policy. So now that you've got your explained, uh, explaining the procedure intervention and your two monitoring interventions, you can now proceed to two bedside interventions or two non-pharmacologic interventions that will apply to the problem that you have at hand, which is her headache that is scoring a pain score of 7 out of 10. So our other interventions will include encouraging Marjorie to do deep breathing exercises to help manage her pain. So if you can review from the structure of the sentence, you don't need to have a very complicated sentence structure there. All you need to have is an intervention and the reason why you are implementing that intervention. Another um, non-pharmacologic intervention would mean to advise or advises Marjorie to engage in diversional activities such as watching television to divert her pain. Okay, so we've got the two non-pharmacologic interventions. We will follow through with an intervention that will include administering medication. And your format should always be administers medication as prescribed in the medication administration record and reassess effectiveness after 30 to 60 minutes. Why? The reason is because when you give a medication to the patient, you don't just leave them to take the medication, but afterwards you assess if the medication is effective, which then leads us to the next intervention. If your medication um, is not effective and if your bedside interventions are not effective, then is the time for you to proceed with the next intervention, which is to refer. So refer to pain team for further care plan if the pain persists. And then afterwards, there's nothing else for you to note intervention-wise. So what do you do? You provide the patient the call bell in order for them to summon help. And then you document all care as planned. So in all of those um, interventions and in all of those sentences, you will see that the sentence structure is always complete. There is always a reason. I mean, a reason why you are doing the interventions and the interventions are very straightforward and concise because you have to remember you only have 14 minutes to write two full nursing care plans appropriate to your patient. Um, other than that, when you fill in all of the nursing interventions, you will then proceed to print your name and your signature below in the space provided as well as the date of your exam. So it should be all in complete print and it should be legible. And I repeat, everything should be in present tense.